it becomes oh, well, 5x minus 6 squared minus y squared. Okay, so now we have our difference of squares. where your a is equal to 5x minus 6, and I'll put it here, and your b is equal to y. So if you plug it into your difference of squares formula, remember your difference of squares is a squared minus b squared, equals a plus b times a minus b. So if you plug that into here, that's going to equal a plus b becomes 5x minus 6 plus y. Oh, move that up a little bit more. And a minus b becomes 5x minus 6 minus y. And that's your answer. Okay, so any questions on this one? All right. I'll leave that up for a second. So now we're going to start simplifying rational expressions. Okay. Now first, just give a quick explanation as to what a rational expression is. It's really just a fraction where your numerator and denominator can be anything from numbers to single terms, from variables to polynomials. You can really have either one up top and on the bottom. Okay, so a rational expression is a combination of numbers, variables, or polynomials, that can be written as a quotient. It is just a fancy way to say fraction. So, for example, if you have 3x to the third over 8, or if you have 5 over 2y, or if you have x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 3x plus 8, those are all rational expressions where your numerator and denominator can be a combination of anything. Okay, it's no longer nice little neat looking fractions. They kind of messy them up a bit. Okay. Now just like with any fraction, we all know that denominators can equal zero. From what you've heard, the planet will blow up if that ever happens. 
Okay, so we remember that when dealing with quotients, uh -oh. or just fractions, that the denominator cannot equal zero. Okay, so the same rule applies here. Your denominator can never equal zero. So, for example, well, ready yet? So, to find where the rational expression is undefined. Just find the values where the denominator equals zero. Now, in some cases, you will have to factor. In some cases, you won't. In some cases, you won't have to do anything at all. I'll leave that up for a minute. So let's say, for example, are any values of x exist that can make the following rational expressions undefined. Okay, so let's say for question A, it's x divided by x minus 3. Say for question B, we have x plus 2 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Say for problem C, we have x to the third minus 6x squared minus 10x plus 8 divided by 4. Now, this is probably the most important thing to remember when looking for undefined values. Looking for undefined values completely ignore the numerator.
The only thing you're worried about is making sure the denominator doesn't equal zero. The numerator can equal anything it wants, but the denominator can never equal zero. So just focus on the denominator. not being equal to zero. Okay, so you may get some really messy looking numerators, completely ignore them. Doesn't matter one bit. Okay, so let's solve this one. Okay, so for problem A, you have x divided by x minus three. So since we know the denominator can equal zero, this just means that x minus three can equal zero. So if you add three to both sides, it means that x can equal three. That's it, that's the value that will make it undefined. Okay. So x can equal any other number in existence, fractions, decimals, you name it, x can equal it, all except three. That's the only number in existence that x will not be able to equal for that number, for that fraction. Okay, now for b, we do the same thing. x plus 2 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, so in this case, since we're looking for what will make it undefined, we know x squared minus 3x plus 2 can equal 0. Okay. But we still don't have a value, so we have to factor this one. So remember, you have two numbers that multiply to equal your c, and those same two numbers add to equal your b. Okay. So which numbers? Negative 1 and negative 2. So negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. So that means that all we did was get this and factor it into that. That x minus 1 times x minus 2 can equal 0. Oh, bring that up some. So whenever you're solving for zero, you just take both of your factors and set them both to zero, but in this case, set them both to not equal zero. So this means that x minus one can equal zero, and x minus two can equal zero. So if we add one to both sides, x can equal one, and x can equal two. So once again, they can equal any other numbers. Any numbers in between them, it could equal zero. It can be, not zero, but it could equal one and a half. It could be zero. It can be 10. It could be a billion. Any number at all except those two. Okay? Because those two numbers will make it undefined. All right. Any questions on those so far? All right. Okay. So now for problem C, let me bring that up a little bit x to the third minus 6x squared minus 10x plus 8. Kind of separate that a little bit. Oh, oops. No, I miswrote that a little bit. 10 times x plus 8 divided by 4. Okay. So in this case, we just have to make sure that 4 doesn't equal 0. It doesn't matter what x value you plug in, there's no way possible you're going to change 4 magically into 0. So this one has absolutely no values that will make it undefined. Since no values 
of x that will make 4 equals 0. There are no oh, bring that up, undefined values. So any questions on that one? All right. Okay. okay so now we're just going to, last but not least, Simplify rational expressions. Okay. So really there are two steps to simplifying rational expressions. The first step is you're going to completely factor the numerator and denominator. which means you can use difference of squares, you can use factoring out the greatest common factor, difference of sum of cubes, whichever method you have to use to factor the numerator and denominator, those are the ones you would use. Okay. In your second step, you're going to cancel out any common values, any, any common factors in the numerator and denominator. Any factors in both the numerator and denominator. Okay, so let's say, for example, if you wanted to simplify 5x minus 5 divided by x to the third minus x squared. So neither one of those are a difference of square, so we don't have to worry about that. But we can factor a 5 out of both of these terms, and we can factor an x squared out of both of those. So 5x minus 5 divided by x to the third minus x squared would just become, if you factor out your 5, you're left with x minus 1. And you can always distribute to double check. Make sure you did it right. And you can factor an x squared out of both of those. So that leaves you with x minus 1. Okay. So you completely factored it. Now you just have to cancel out the ones they have in common. Because we know x minus 1 divided by x minus 1, anything divided by itself is just going to equal 1. So x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is just equal to 1. So that leaves you with 5 over x squared. Okay, so in this case, x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is equal to 1. <coughs> All right, any questions on this one? Okay, so let's try another one. Make sure it's up a little bit. 
What if we wanted to simplify x squared, oh, circle the final answer, plus 8x plus 7 divided by x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is factor both of those. The numerator and denominator. Okay, and I'll do that kind of on the side here. So x squared plus 8x plus 7. There's nothing in front of the x squared. So we just have to find two numbers that multiply to equal 7, and those same two numbers add to equal 8. So in this case, 7 and 1 works. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 plus 1 is 8. Okay, so this just factors to become x plus 7, x plus 1. Now, if we go ahead and factor the denominator, x squared minus 4x minus 5. Again, we have to find two numbers that multiply to equal your c, which is negative 5. Uh-oh, sorry about that. And those same two numbers add to equal your b, which is negative 4. Okay. So in this case, negative 5 and 1 work. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Okay, so this just factors to become x minus 5, x plus 1. Okay, so if you factor the numerator and denominator, that gives us x squared plus 8x plus 7 divided by x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, and that factors to become, we know x, x squared plus 8x plus 7 is x plus 1 times x plus 7. x squared minus 4x minus 5 is x minus 5 times x plus 1. Okay. So for our second step, we just factor out the one they have in common. Or cancel, rather. Okay, so x plus 1 divided by x plus 1, that cancels out to equal 1. So that gives us x plus 7 over x plus 5. All right. So any questions on that one? I feel like this one might be a little easier. Oh, it gets harder, unfortunately. Oh, okay. <laughs> the only, really, as long as you understand the factoring, it's not too bad. But all that factoring from before kind of comes back. So these are the easy factors. So it that's when you have to learn all the other ones so stuff can start to cancel out. It's yeah. It's it's not bad as long as you know the factoring. So if you don't understand the factoring you may want to go back and brush up on that. Because and that's why we're gonna pretty much stop at this section because everything involving rational numbers revolve around factoring. So yes. Oh, X minus 5. Thank you. All right. So any questions on this one? All right. So we'll do one more, and then I'll let you go. OK, 
Okay, so this is one of those kind of helpful little things. So if you have, let's say, y minus x equals negative 1 times x minus y. And this actually does come in handy because, let's say, for example, if you have 3 minus x, you can actually just factor out a negative 1 from both of them and make it x minus 3. Because if you distribute that negative 1, you get minus x plus 3, or you can flip them around to 3 minus x. Okay. So let's say, for example, if you have... Let's say if you want to simplify, say for problem A, x plus y over y plus x. Now let's say for problem B, x minus y over y minus x. And for problem C, we'll throw some actual values in there. Let's say, bless you, let's say x plus 4, or not plus, minus x minus 4 over 4 minus x. Bless you. Okay. So for problem A, x plus y over y plus x, when it's a plus, you can just switch them back and forth, doesn't matter. It's just like saying 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. You can switch them right around. Okay, so you have x plus y over x plus y. Why do I keep going to put that there? Over x plus y. Okay, anything divided by itself is just going to equal 1. Now, the thing is, you can't do the switch around with minus. You can't say 5 minus 4 is the same as 4 minus 5. It's, it's not equal. So for B, x minus y over y minus x, first thing you want to do is remember, if you factor a negative 1 out of both of those, you can switch them around. So y minus x is equal to negative 1 times x minus y. Okay, so you can replace this with, ne with negative 1 times x minus y. So you have x minus y. Oh, why do I keep wanting to put a 1 there? There we go. x minus y over negative 1 times x minus y. Getting ready to do it again. There we go. Okay, so you have x minus y over x minus y. This is where it comes in handy because now you can just cancel those two out. Okay, so you end up with 1 over negative 1 times 1, which is just negative 1. Okay, so that little trick there definitely comes in handy. Okay, so if we do that with C, which is x minus 4 over 4 minus x, we do the exact same thing. If we want to switch those two around, we just factor out a negative 1. So 4 minus x is equal to, let me kind of block that off a little bit, negative 1 times x minus 4. Okay, so now we'll have x minus 4 over negative 1 times x minus 4. And if you want to put that in parentheses, you can.